Good afternoon. Welcome to Northwestern Oklahoma State University's Computer Guest Artist Lecture Series. Today we're joined by Kristen Texera uh, from Boston area. Uh, she graduated from uh, Massachusetts College of Art and Design and has a BFA in painting in 2010. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and uh, uh, talking about your work. Thank you for having me. How are you all? Hello. Um, so I have my a slideshow of my work. Hold on, let me do the flip it around cam. Do you want to talk about uh, some of your recent uh, string of uh, uh, artists in residences, uh, successes, and whatnot exhibitions? Sure. Um, this summer, my most recent residency I did was at the um, Golden Artist Residency in New Berlin, New York. The like central New York State, near Syracuse, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's run by the family that created the Golden Paint brand. So they have a painting factory right across the street from this big old barn that they renovated. And um, the barn has these really beautiful open studios and living quarters. And I was with two other artists this summer, one from San Francisco and one from Brooklyn. And... Um, they gave me all the paint that I could ever imagine playing with and other supplies and different mediums and different primers to prime canvas or board. Um, so it was just a great month to explore different materials because I'm primarily an oil painter, but they're an acrylic brand, um, and I never really use acrylics, but I explored, had fun. Um, and, yeah, it was great. opened up a lot of... Windows met a lot of people, um, and they taught me a lot about different materials. So it was fun to just play around up there. So that was my most recent residency. And um, my current project that I'm working on is uh, for a show in Delaware in a month or so. And the pro I work a lot with memory. Um, and the project I'm doing is a timeline of all of the windows that I can never remember looking out of, like significant windows in my life. So it's just telling a story of place um, and basically of my life from 1988 until the present places I've lived and considered homes. Um, just because with my paintings, I need to have sort of a structure to start with or a project to start with in order to make paintings because... Um, yeah, I just need to have, like, a framework, so. Okay, could you talk more about your framework? Uh, how do you come up with your ideas? Do you write them down? Do you do quick yeah. sketches? Um, a lot of my work and inspiration is based on just interactions with other people, um, just putting myself in a new environment, so I like to travel a lot and just have my eyes open to different places. Um, and, um... And so, what, was, what were you just asking me again? Sorry, something just clicked on my computer and then I got distracted. That's okay. Uh, I was basically asking you your processes. Like, how, right. how do you okay. get... So, yeah, so I just, gain, I just gather materials from everyday life and I try and preserve and document certain moments and memories um, just to provide proof for myself and for other people of, of existing and being here. Um, so a lot of my work, um, is based on memory of like places where I've lived or memory of interacting with certain people and certain colors come to mind when I think about certain people or places or even songs or food that I've eaten. So um, it's sort of my vocabulary and it's the way that I retell stories. It's just through color. Um, so, yeah. Kind of the question. Without further ado, let's take a look at some of your work. Okay, great. So I am doing this slideshow sort of in a chronological order um, to show you where I started and how I've progressed. Um, let me see if I get it. Is it working? Can you see this? Uh, at the moment, I see my face. Oh, well, that's a nice thing to see. But <laughs> let me show you my work. Hold on. Um... Share. Here we go. Did it? Yes. You got it? Okay, great. 
So this painting here um, is back when I like 2009 or so, um, when I was a sophomore in college at MassArt. And um, I started out more as a representational painter because um, when I first got into mass art, uh, my first intro painting class was just a lot of um, still lives and model painting. And it was great because I, I figured out how to translate what I was looking to, at onto a piece of paper. Forgive all the beeping in the background. Got lot, lots of traffic out my window. Um, so then when I got to my sophomore year, I got into my studio, my professor was like, all right, have at it, start start painting, and I just didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't know what to paint because I was used to having these assignments, so I just started doing this series of on chairs, okay. um, just because it was what was in my studio. And so this is just a, a very large piece um, from that period of time. And as I was working on them, and I got a lot more interested in the shadows in the wall and the shapes there, so I that's kind of what started getting me involved into abstract art and just seeing breaking things down into more like shapes and whatnot. So this painting here is sort of in the next progression where I was still looking at places and and taking from real life. This is a painting of my mother's kitchen, but it's sort of breaking the shapes down um, and just getting these simple, more bold colors, but playing with texture and some collage. Um, there are some book covers in here. This is sort of from a similar period of time um, of the, my living room and a coffee table. It's just kind of getting bold and experimenting with, with abstract painting because I was a little bit fearful of it for a little while. Um, so that was that. Um, and then from that point in time, I got a, a bit more simple with my mark making, um, but still was trying to tell a story. So these lines are, are colors specifically from um, my bedroom, like a year after school. Um, and each line comes from something specific. So it's still, I still am gathering material from everyday life and from observation, but really just experimenting with different ways to lay color down on a surface. Great. And then this one here um, was an experiment going away from that a little bit where I was sort of placing color down on the surface and then reacting to like the mark that I made and then continuing to react as I put color down. So I felt a little bit weird here because I like to have, I like to be telling a story, I like to be having, um, having a point to why I'm making a piece of art and this is sort of just playing around, but it's still fun. Um, so then going back to telling stories with color um, and sort of trying to appreciate everyday moments and just force myself to, to re remain awake and very present, I started gathering different moments from each day just as like a project to, to remain present because I can time travel a bit and just wander off and days off and miss the days. So this piece here was... Um, a painting when a poet, the poet laureate in Massachusetts came to visit my school and was reciting poetry and then there was the sun setting out the window. Um, so the green on this painting is just these crappy crap um, curtains that were on the windows and there was a little crevice and I could see the sun setting out there. So it was kind of, that was a, a point in time that I wanted to pinpoint and just like stamp down and remember because um, the poem that she was reading was really lovely and it was just to try and remember that point in time. So this painting is called Sunset Through the, Cur the Curtains While the Poet Read About the River. And my title started getting long um, just to try and incorporate my writing into my artwork because I write a lot as like sort of a starting point for my paintings. This is another sort of long titled piece called um, spider strings at the top of small pines blow in the wind like the sails of ghost ships. So I was trying to sort of have poems incorporated into my paintings and that's how I was doing it was through titles. And this was um, collage and oil on paper. 
Great. The next one. And then, um, as I was saying before, I, I take my, I have inspiration just through like interacting with people. And I was at a residency up in Maine called Haystack. And there were about like 120 people there and we got really close really fast in a matter of two weeks just because we were sharing meals and, and um, staying up late together and sharing art together and making together. And I decided to do a project where I painted the colors that came to mind when I thought about these people. And so I did about 120 or so small paintings with little memories at the bottom for each person there and then displayed them in the, the dining area where we all ate together every night and they could take that little painting home with them as, as sort of proof and a memory of existing in that place together. Um, so I kind of like to do projects like that as well. Um, I did another one that was much larger. Um, this is 400 paintings. They're just small paintings um, based on all of the people that I could remember during my time at Mass Art. This was just two summers ago I did this project. Um, and it was the same idea where you, I kind of I had the show at a gallery that was run by Mass Art alumni and kind of wanted to have a reunion and I didn't know how to do it and wanted to get everybody back together so I figured if I was giving away paintings I could try and gather up a good crowd. And they ended up working. I think I got maybe like um, over a hundred people there. I still have a stack of these and I just sort of deliver them whenever I bump into somebody. I carry a, a stack of people that I know are living in Brooklyn or in New York in case I run into them and it happens and it's great. They're like, what are you doing with this painting? So. Um, just, yeah, just these are the colors that come to mind when I think of certain people. Great. Could you talk about the size of these small paintings that you are showing us? The size of these, this is probably like three by five okay. or so, all of these little pieces. And then, so I, wor I work small, but it ends up adding up to like one giant collection of paintings. So it's one big project. Um, so yeah. Do you Talk a little bit more about that because it seems like when you uh, put, put them together in a large format such as this, mm -hmm. and you have your friends and people you know take, start taking pieces away, it becomes very interactive. It also uh, uh, changes the piece quite significantly when this thing starts to disappear. Uh, is that all, was that always your intention, or how do you see? Uh, what how would you define your work? Is this, is this more um, installation time based? Is it just the painting, or how do you? How would, what would you call it? Oh yeah, I would, it's definitely a, an installation and and it's an interactive piece and sometimes when I'm painting I, I like I get stuck and and I wonder why why I'm doing this and just making these objects and so when I do these projects I feel a lot better about it because I know it's for just a good it's just for a good cause like I'm able to give give these paintings away and people get, get really happy that they're being remembered. Um, so yeah, I just like doing these projects. They're definitely more of an interactive installation because um, they can take them with them. So it's a nice thing to know that there are colors all around that I created and people can enjoy them without having to drop a couple bucks on them. So, um, so my next project, uh, I did this at the Vermont Studio Center, which is a residency where I met you and a yes. bunch of other great artists. Um, this is, sorry, the color's a little off here, but this was a project called All of the Boys That I Can Ever Remember Kissing. Um, it's sort of like a Dear Diary project that I'm a little bit embarrassed about lately. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was fun, and people really liked reading about it. Um, but this is another sort of timeline where I was experimenting with different ways to put color down on a surface and limiting my palette, because I just love mixing color so much that I was kind of trying to wonder other ways to lay the color down. Um, so uh, there's, I don't know, there's like 20 boys or something in my life since I was four that I've kissed. And um, yeah, just did like their name, age, location, and circumstance. They're all kind of quirky little funny stories of the boys in my life that I've kissed. Um, this piece here was a project that I did at, at a residency when I was in France. And um, I was in France in like June and 
the it was about to be summertime there, and the light was staying out so late at night. It would be it wouldn't set until like nine thirty or ten. So I got really excited being able to have this like this golden hour, magic hour, and the light be out so late at night. So I just wanted to keep working and sort of capture the, that color. So I would race the sunset almost every night and just try and get the changing colors on, on the hills that was outside my studio window. Um, so another sort of timeline of color, but taking color from observation. Um, and underneath there are like, it's sort of like a scientific methodical obsession, which I really like to do too, but there's just the, like the time and the date and the weather um, written underneath each painting. I also did a project while I was abroad um, where I interviewed my grandmother who grew up in a small French village before I went to France and tried to get um, her stories and her memories of her childhood in a French village and then compare them to, to my time that I was going to have in France. So I sort of broke down a comparison with like her house, the layout of her house, the layout of the landscape, um, just a, a sort of a random memory and I think a memory revolving around food. Um, and I, compare, I did memories memory maps of her places versus my places and this was the kitchen where I was staying um, and just sort of I was trying to time travel and get and just sort of seal down the place and then compare it to whatever she could remember from her time so these are just memory maps of the places in France and um, and then when I moved to Brooklyn, it was winter, and I didn't really have too much inspiration going on, so I was doing a lot of reading. And one of my favorite um, authors is Ray Bradbury, and he does a lot of beautiful short stories. So I just sort of chose um, the titles of his short stories to interpret into paintings. And I took about 30 or so. This is just a limited selection of them. Um, and the colors and the shapes that came to mind when I thought about these stories and their titles and made a series of paintings based on those. Um, and then these here, um, another sort of series of memory maps of my grandmother and her four sisters' homes. I really like sort of having these tests, like memory tests, where I have to focus and sort of go back in time and travel down hallways and try and remember rooms and colors of places and where furniture was and um, I, I was sort of babysat by my grandmother a lot when I was younger and so it's sort of fun for me just to to go back to these places in my mind of, of her house and her grandmother and her sister's homes where we used to hang out a little bit um, and try and remember the the layout of these places. Um, so this is one just more up close, and there's some collage elements in there too. And then these are um, images of the series that I'm just finishing up right now of all of the windows that I can remember looking through. Um, and it's again sort of methodical with, I started with all of the places and the time and um, then wrote a little memory of each place underneath. And Someone also just brought to my attention recently, I'm, I'm always leaving these white borders around my images that I create, and um, I grew up with my grandfather just always taking Polaroid pictures of us. I just have like family albums full of Polaroid pictures, and I think that maybe that's something that I just do is I leave that larger space at the bottom to write the time and date and whatever the memory is of. Um, and then, uh, so that's something to think of. This is like the larger collection of them. Color is off. But, yeah, I think that's about it. That's the end of my slideshow. Hope, hope that's all right. That's fantastic. All right, uh, let's get out of share screen and uh, see, do you guys have any questions for Kristen? Yeah. I have a question. Going sure. from your representational art, I guess, when you were younger, what are some things that helped you transition into this more abstract art? 
Um, I think it was just looking at a lot more abstract art. I had a big struggle just because um, my family was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what, what? Like, you know how to paint. Why are you just painting these shapes? So I had a lot of great professors that were just showing me artists that were big in the world and, um, and getting familiar with different ways of mark making and, and the fact that certain stories can be told or there can be like really smart different ways of making paintings like mathematical based paintings or scientifically gathered data paintings um, and different installations and filling rooms with color is just something that is just a beautiful different way of painting instead of just copying something that you've seen. I just think it's smarter um, and it just took looking at more more artists. So. Yes, that's that. Anybody else? What do you guys think of my work? It's really cool. It was very interesting. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Not then uh, I want to thank you for your time. Um, this has been great. Thank you for sharing your work with us. And uh, um, we're going to sign out over here, uh, Chris Texera, uh, Boston-based artist. Uh, many bucks to you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks so much. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.